uh, okay so in the last class we had studied up to switches right so we had seen about ethernet also and we saw that how switches um actually do self learning and then they help in forwarding the packets further if they have the address then they will forward it to the correct interface otherwise they will broadcast the packet right so um after this today we are simply starting with the last part of switches where we are trying to um compare between the tasks of switch and a router okay so both are store and for both have store and forward facilities right router is a network layer device and switch is a link layer device okay so as you can see here that um, the devices they have up to application layer okay and the switches have um, functionality up to link layer and routers have functionalities up to network layer okay so whenever they receive a frame then it will go to the link layer then it will be um, i mean for the for the router it will go to the link layer as a frame and then it will be uh, demultiplexed to a datagram at the network layer and then further again if it has to be transferred then it will be again encapsulated into a frame and then transferred over to the medium if it is a switch then once the frame is received it will still remain the frame but the link layer functionalities will up to the link layer functionalities will be considered or examined and after that again this frame will be transferred for the via the media okay so this is the difference between uh, the functionalities of a switch and a router both have forwarding tables okay but what's the difference in case of routers um the forwarding tables basically get their entries from the output of the routing algorithm okay and what are those entries consisting of they are consisting of that you know what is the corresponding ip address and what is the corresponding interface okay so either the ip address and the interface or the ip address range and the interface okay so we write it in different uh, ways okay then switches switches uh, will learn the forwarding uh, or switches forwarding tables will learn about uh, the um, interfaces and how they should be transferred with the help of the mac addresses okay so we have seen in the last class that switch will do learning okay so if it does not know that um, what is the address to which the um packet needs to be forwarded to i mean uh, what interface should it go to then it will simply flood it but it will learn the uh, destination and the interface from which from which the packet arrived right so it will learn it and then it will put it into its table so similarly for all the packets it will keep uh, reading that and then it will flood its uh it will not flood it 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 will update its forwarding table okay so this is the self learning part of switches today we are going to start with start with vlans okay so can anybody tell me what is vlan everybody has heard it everybody has worked with it what is vlan so i just want to know that what is your idea about a vlan yeah what is vlan hello am i audible yes ma'am okay okay so there are no answers for this okay all right let's see then what is vlan nobody wants to answer anyways so what was let's start with what was the motivation for vlans okay so why was this brought into picture first of all okay so we have said 
that lan is nothing but a um, network within the within a given building okay but if you see the institute that we are having here or if you see any other big institute does it just still remain same in that same building and everything works uh, like how it is actually defined in the books it is not right so what do we do we use the lan connections we use the <clears throat> systems and then we move also but we want to get access to the server that's what is happening right now also you guys are at your homes but uh, you want to um, use uh, your systems which are there in the labs or in the, in your departments for your lab exams or lab programs etc that is one thing that is one observation another is you you were here you were in the lab and uh, you came to the hostel you are using the hostel lan but now uh, you have some issue with some program that you were uh, running in the server and now you want to access it okay or maybe you were running the some program in your um, lab system now you want to see that what was the output that was there okay so these are very common um, tasks that we do in general but how does that happen okay that is the question that we are going to answer here so now one is single broadcast domain okay so in single broadcast domain the scaling is uh, so layer to broadcast uh, traffic that is arp dhcp unknown mac etc they must cross the entire lan okay so if we have uh, simply a bigger lan or a larger lan area then if it is a single broadcast domain then the scaling for uh, i mean for sending a lot of um, traffic at the same time scaling will be an issue right so arp dhcp unknown mac in all of these cases broadcast messages are being sent okay so it must cross the entire line so this will lead to efficiency security and privacy issues okay this is one motivation for vlans then administrative issues just like what i just told that if you were in your uh, lab and you were using your system now you have come to your hostel and now you want to use or you want to just logically attach your, yourself to the system that you were working on in your department okay so these are the motivations that uh, we that have actually motivated researchers to work on vlans so this is what has happened so here it has given uh, the example like you were in computer science department but you actually moved to the e department with your system you attached to the e department slant but uh, e department switch sorry and uh, but uh, you still want to get connected to the um, or you want to still logically attach remain logically attached to the computer science switch okay so in that case um, we will uh, use vlans okay so port based vlans before that let us see what is a vlan the definition has been given here as such that is switches supporting vlan capabilities can be configured to define multiple virtual lans over single physical lan infrastructure okay so let's see the port based vlan where switch ports are grouped this grouping is done by the switch management software so that the single physical switch will operate as multiple virtual switches so this is your single physical switch these are the vlan ports for one department these are the this is taking the example that was given in the previous slide that means uh, you are uh, associated with cac you went to triple e but again you want to logically uh, associate yourself to the switch of cac department so given that example uh, this um, implication has been drawn here so here you have um, 
electrical department vlan ports and here you have cs department vlan ports okay but belonging to the same switch only physically they are belonging to the same switch but it operates as multiple virtual switches so what does this give traffic isolation so frames two or from ports 1 to 8 cannot uh, or, or cannot reach these ports or if i have to say in another way that means frames arising from these ports okay that is 1 to 8 should be destined to these ports only okay they cannot go to the other set of ports okay so that's what is given here frames to or from ports 1 to 8 can only reach ports 1 to 8 okay so now ports can be dynamically assigned among vlans so now we need to do forwarding between vlans right so this forwarding is done via routing okay just we were having as a uh, separate switches so here also the forwarding in vlans uh, forwarding between vlans is done via routing okay so in order to you know because we are still using the outcome of the router okay when when we are uh, using when we are doing forwarding between uh, vlans so in order to reduce all of this um, hardware you know in the hardware you will have router then again you will have switch so instead of reducing instead of going through all that complexity to reduce the complexity let's just the vendors have come up with this that you know um they combined the switches and the routers together okay now let's see vlans spanning multiple switches okay so here we had seen the example that you know ports 1 to 8 belong to double e and uh, ports 9 to 15 belong to cs department okay now there is another switch where 2 3 and 5 ports they belong to uh, electrical department and 4 6 7 and 8 belong to the computer science department vlan okay you can see that there is one <coughs> sorry there's one port 16 here and there's one port 1 here okay what is the task for these ports so they are trunk ports which carry frames between vlans defined over multiple physical switches okay so frames are forwarded within vlan uh, frames that are forwarded within the vlan they cannot simply used our 802.1 ethernet structure right there should be some other information along with it okay in our ethernet structure what were we having if you remember uh, let me go to that slide of ethernet structure it is far back i think let me just go back there ethernet structure this is our ethernet frame structure this was our ethernet frame structure right you had a preamble you had destination address source address type field data page data and the crc okay so this was our um, only information that we could get or we could send over the ethernet frame structure but when we are using vlan we need extra information to actually get to the destination port that we actually want to send our uh, data to right so we need to have some extra information uh, on top of that so now how to do that okay so for vlans 802.1 q protocol is used okay so this protocol adds or removes additional header fields from frames forwarded between different trunk ports okay so trunk ports are responsible for carrying frames between vlans okay when vlans those vlans are defined over multiple switches okay so for example here these two vlans uh, that is cs vlan and uh, e vlan they are defined over two different switches now there is this trunk port 16 at this switch and trunk port 1 at this switch 
Now uh, they carry all the frames between these two VLANs as they are defined over different physical switches. Now when they are defined in such a way, then we simply cannot use the Ethernet frame structure which is defined in 802.1. Okay, so we need the VLAN ID. So in order to do that, um, just an enhancement on 802.1 was pro provided, which is known as 802.1Q. So that protocol adds or removes additional header fields for frames which are forwarded between trunk ports. So how does this look like? This is the Ethernet frame structure. And this is the 802.1Q frame structure. So in between, there has to be some information. What is that information? The 2 by TAC protocol identifier and TAC control information. Okay. So this is the 12-bit VLAN ID field. It has the 3-bit priority field like IP, TOS, etc. Okay. And once, so this will, in, uh, this is changing. Okay. And then the data payload is also there. So then we decompute the cyclic redundancy check. We will see what is cyclic redundancy check. We still have to go through the error control part of data link layer. Okay, so this is just for now. Just remember that this part helps in um, error detection. Okay. Now let's get to mpls okay link virtualization okay so mpls is actually uh mpls enabled router so basically it's an uh, it's a technology that is provided to different devices basically routers which will enable such uh, communications over VLANs, okay? We are considering these VLANs, right? So for providing VLANs, MPLS can be used for providing some very secure network, okay? So suppose when when uh, two very VIP persons are talking, that this happens over hotlines, okay? So in those situations, MPLS can be used, okay? So this idea of MPLS has been brought from virtual circuits. Okay, now let's see how this works out. So we have the Ethernet header and we have the remainder of the Ethernet frame, including IP header with IP source, destination address, etc. Now, when we use MPLS, then this extra MPLS header information will be added to this. Okay, so why this uh, MPLS was used? One is, of course, your VLAN, your secure networks. And another um, profit or another advantage that MPLS also gives is that it provides high-speed IP forwarding. Okay, So between whom? Between only the routers which are MPLS capable. All right. So we will see what is this MPLS capability and all that. But let us first know that uh, it provides high speed communication between MPLS capable routers. How does it do that? So in earlier schemes, what we have studied in uh, packet uh, routing and packet forwarding um, using routers in the network layer, we saw that whenever a packet arrives into a system, then we have to check its uh, header field to find out what is the IP address given. And then using either longest prefix matching or any other um, matching technique, we just find out that what should be the corresponding interface through which the transfer needs to be done. So this reading and then the reading of the 32-bit uh, IP address and then uh, again matching it with the table uh, forwarding table um, entities or sorry forwarding table entries that takes a lot of time if, the, if there are a large number of entries. So in order to reduce all of this processing timing, uh, MPLS was proposed. Okay, so MPLS, instead of checking that, uh, you know, this IP address every time a packet reaches, MPLS just provides a label to this. Okay, so that is why we have this label portion in the name of MPLS. Okay, multi-protocol label switching. I will come to the switching part also. But... Uh, 
yeah so uh, this label part is uh, basically allowing that you know you just put the label to the each uh, packet and then transfer it over to the medium so the label will be read only by the router side it will not read any other destination ip address or anything it will simply read the label and then it will forward the packet to the corresponding interface okay so that's why you have the label field and then you have exp f and ttl fields okay. what are these things okay so first let us uh, go through the mpls portions as to some basic components mpls uh, works only with mpls capable routers which are also known as label switched routers okay what is the task of these routers these routers forward packets to the outgoing interfaces based on only what has been given as the label field in the label field instead of reading the ip address okay so therefore the forwarding table of these uh, routing tables will also look a bit different from what forwarding table we have already studied right now again it also provides flexibility that is um, it makes a uh, different forwarding decisions about uh, as compared to ip forwarding tables okay so um, what are these differences so it can use destination and source addresses to route flows to some destinations in a different manner so when i was teaching uh, traffic engineering you will uh, you might remember that there was a question if you want to route traffic instead of from one uh, path is if you want to route the traffic through another path then we need to use some kind of traffic engineering to do that right so mpls is a mean of providing that kind of facility okay also if a link fails then with mpls routers the other routes or other route flows can quickly be uh, computed okay why because with mpls we have uh, mpls routers we have pre computed backup paths so let's see the difference between mpls and ip paths so we have a set of routers here okay and this is a and d these are some hosts okay now we are differentiating ip routers and mpls routers by these two different uh, uh, colored routers okay so r1 r2 r3 and r4 are mpls routers and r5 and r6 are ip routers okay so in ip routing what will happen the path to the destination will be determined by the destination address alone okay whereas in case of mpls the entry router r4 can use different mpls routes to a okay For, so that's what i told right that we can use traffic engineering in case of mpls so um, when in ip writing in ip routing you were fixed or you were having a fixed path to destination and that path was determined just by the destination address alone whereas in case of mpls the router can use different mpls routes to the same uh, destination address okay so this is given here as a note a small note that you know mpls even though it was um, proposed long back uh, it still had the um, concept of generalized forwarding in it if you see uh, if you remember what was taught to you about generalized forwarding you will remember that in generalized forwarding instead of just depending upon the destination ip address for forwarding the packet we also have some match and action pairs right so that um, you know depending upon certain properties you either send the packet or you drop the packet or you send the packet through another way right uh, so that we could have the concepts or we could provide or support the concepts of firewall nat etc right so that kind of concept was already proposed with mpls okay and now they are being used with all these uh, technologies called nat and 
uh, firewalls, etc., and some other uh, technologies too. Okay. Now another difference, what is there? That uh, MPLS routers pre-compute backup routes. In case there is a link failure, it can have uh, the packet sent through one of the back backup routes. Now, how does the MPLS signaling happen? Okay, so MPLS works with OSPF. Okay. So it is a ISIS uh, link state forwarding uh, flooding protocol. Okay, so it is a modified link state flooding. How does it work? So it carries the information by MPLS routing. Okay, it carries the information that is to be used uh, by MPLS routing. So basically, these will be advertising these other routers, R3, R1, R2. They will be advertising their labels to these routers. Okay, how will they advertise? We will see that. Okay, so once this um, advertising is done, then the MPLS router that is R4 uses RSVPT signaling protocol to set up MPLS forwarding at downstream routers. Okay. So once these routers, that is R1, R2, and R3, once they are sending this um, OS, uh, I mean, uh, sending this information, MPLS label, over this, uh, using this modified OSPF ISIS uh, protocol, then uh, they are basically here reserving the link bandwidth or some other, uh, yeah, here they will be reserving the link bandwidth so that uh, the transmission can happen in a secured and faster way. So remember here we are using the concepts of virtual circuit network, right? So this is how the MPLS routers are actually making use of the concepts of VCNs here. Okay, now let's check the forwarding table of MPLS routers. So this is the forwarding table of an MPLS router. So let me just tell you for now here that this in label is going to tell that uh, the arrived packet has arrived with what label in its header. Out label, that is what label should be given to the um, packet. Okay, and A gives the destination address and this is the corresponding interface. Okay, so this is how the forwarding table entries are being filled. Okay, now let me just show you how this works. All right, let me skip this part. Let me show you here how it works. All right. Is the screen visible to everybody? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me draw. So we have one router here. We have another router here. Okay, then we have a corresponding host a interface here. Here's also one more interface. So this is represented by this subnet. This is represented by There is simply a host here. Now, R2 is MPLS enabled. Okay, this is interface zero. This is interface zero 
for R2. This is interface one for R2. Okay. Now, when MPLS is enabled in a router, it allocates a label for each prefix in its routing table. Okay. And then it will advertise both the label and the prefix that it uh, represents to its neighboring routers. Okay. So let's see R2's table. Okay. Let's make a table for R2. So this is a label field, the first one. Then we have a prefix. Then we have interface. Okay, I'm not putting the in and out part here. Just to make it a small table. Okay, so we can put label like 15 and the prefix. So if something comes with the prefix of 8.1.1 .1 with a label 15, then the MPLS router R2 will transfer it over the interface one. If something arrives at R2 with label 16, then it and it has 18.1.1. Uh, .1 .1, huh? So and it arrives with a prefix of 18.3.3, .3, then it goes through the zeroth interface. Okay, so. <clears throat> So R2 basically allocates labels to its prefixes and labels are chosen at the convenience of the allocating router itself. Okay, so this is the way uh, the R2's forwarding table will look like. Okay, this is what R2 would want to uh, first advertise to everybody that, you know, if something is, uh, now let me, achha, forget that. Let me tell you about one more thing. So R2 has uh, this data in its forwarding table, okay? Now R2 wants that uh, its neighbors, instead of sending just the IP address, they should put some label into their, um, their header. And uh, if that header matches with some IP address, then it will forward it to the corresponding interface, okay? So it has to tell its neighbors that, you know, please send me the, um, the packets with a particular label. So the label is being decided by R2 and it advertises that information to its neighboring routers, right? So R2 advertises its labels, whatever label it wants. If it wants that, uh, it wants 15 uh, to be the label for it, uh, for, uh, you know, all the, uh, IP, I mean, all the packets which are coming, uh, which are having the destination IP address prefix as 18.1.1. If MPLS router uh, R2 wants that uh, all the packets that are arriving to it with a destination uh, prefix of 18.3.3, then the sender should send it with a label of 16. Okay. So the Router R2 will basically advertise this information to all its neighboring routers. Okay. Now, so once this information is sent out to all the other routers. Okay. So whenever this guy will send some packet to R2 it will and if it is suppose destined to um, r3 not not r3 sorry that um, this ip address 18.1.1 okay so that means it will put a label of 15 here okay so once this packet reaches here at r2 then r2 knows that if the label is 15 then it's um, destination uh, uh, prefix is 18.1.1 .1. so it will transfer the packet over to this link this interface okay so what will happen so what is essentially happening instead of checking this entire ip address uh, sorry 
you have a packet now let me do it in this way so earlier you had the entire ip address here in the header field okay so instead of checking all of this 32 bit ip address what you are doing and also you have to match here with the entire content of the forwarding table you have to search where is the corresponding prefix and then uh, you just select that and find out what is the interface that was happening earlier in ip routers now what's happening with mpls router instead of checking the 32 bits you are simply checking the label here very small number simply checking the label here and then you are checking in the forwarding table where is the corresponding on entry and then you are forwarding the packet to the next uh, interface okay now let us assume another scenario is this part clear if not I i'm going to erase this part okay if not just let me know So since no more further questions are there, I'm just, I'm still keeping it anyways. Okay. Now let's just have another scenario. Okay. So right now we just took a look at R2. R2 wants um, labeled packets. So R2 has uh, set the advertisements and accordingly packets are uh, arriving to R2. Okay. Now let us suppose that R3 is also a MPLS router. Okay, so this also has MPLS enabled. I mean, it is also an MPLS enabled router. So R3 also wants that, okay, I will not uh, take entire IP addresses. I will also look at labels. So what does R3 do? R3 sends out the information that put label 20 to any uh, packet that is arriving with a destination IP prefix of 18.1.1. Okay. And if it arrives, then I will forward it to my further interface, which is suppose one. Suppose I'm putting this interface as one. Okay. So now this is the case uh, that is happening now. This is at R3. Sorry. This is at R3. So R3 does this here. Okay, now um, what would R3 do? R3 would advertise this information. So R2 will get to know, R2 will get to know that R3 is, uh, R3 wants, just let me erase this part. Okay. Okay. So R3 has advertised to R2. Okay. So R2 must know that any packet that is arriving with the destination address 18.1.1, .1, then it has to change the label there for that packet. Okay. So suppose this packet 15 has arrived at R2. So now it has the label 15. It checked at R2 that 18.1.1 uh, prefix is there. 15 is the label. So it has to be sent over the interface one. But before that, R3 has sent an advertisement to R2 saying that it also wants label 20 given to the packets which are uh, forwarded to it and are destined towards um, any host having prefix 18.1.1. So what entry should be there in the forwarding table? So this is known as the remote label. I'm just cleaning this part up once again. Okay. 
so this is the remote label field so what will we add here so here the advertised information that is 20 20 will be added so now your packet was having 15 as its label now when it will be transferred over interface 1 the label will be 20 and then when it reaches r3 r3 will simply read that okay some packet has arrived its uh, label is 20 so it is for the interface 1 interface 1 okay so this is what mpls helps us with okay so you don't have to take um, you know you don't need to um, have a lookup table where you will look at all the ip addresses match the prefixes every time a uh, packet arrives okay just you check the label and your costly uh, task that you were doing that is your longest prefix matching that cost is also reduced okay now there's something else also i would like to say so now okay so this is only for just few set of uh, packets that we just saw okay some packet with some label is being transferred over to this router and it is being uh, further uh, sent over to the medium to a different router okay now this is this is a subnet here okay so if you want the so if you want to have traffic engineering okay or you want to have uh, the concepts of generalized forwarding used uh, using mpls then what is happening in those cases a set of packets are basically given the same kind of forwarding treatment right so that means if a packet comes with some particular kind of property then you uh, forward them uh, or you just treat them in a different manner so here uh, we are not doing any kind of um, i mean we are not looking at any kind of other ways like securing or firewalling at this point we are simply looking at the fact that suppose a set of packets comes with a particular property then we will forward it in a given interface otherwise we will forward it in another interface let us take that as example so this concept of basically uh, considering a set of packets which receive the same forwarding treatment okay set of packets which receive the same forwarding treatment those are set to form a forwarding equivalence class fec okay fec is a forwarding equivalence class where a set of packets that are to receive the same forwarding treatment in a given router um, they fall under this class that is forwarding equivalence class okay so any mps label will be associated with this fec all right one more information so earlier it used to happen that see mpls uh, lied between layer 2 and layer 3 okay so it used to be called as a layer 2.5 protocol okay just remember this information all right all right so essentially what it does speed up traffic so makes it faster you are simply reading the labels that is one thing shapes traffic okay shapes traffic flows you can always say that routers can say that you know if uh, some packet is coming with a particular destination then you uh, then they can say that they will forward those packets with uh, those packets to another interface right suppose uh, a particular uh, subnet is there which is uh, which can be um, reached from interface one also which can be reached from interface zero also but interface one is getting very um, very much uh, congested so the router can send the uh, or advertise to other uh, mpls routers that you know if there is any packet that is coming with this particular prefix uh, then you label it with 
16 and within that MPLS router it will it will just keep this information but if anything comes with uh, the label 16 any packet arrives with label 16 that means it is supposed to go to that congested path that is why an interface one so it will just change that and it will say that okay if something is to go through that congested path instead of doing that let us give it another path that is via interface zero okay so with this what will happen is that uh, you know uh, we are basically giving traffic a particular shape okay so we are shaping the traffic in this case all right so this basically makes your traffic flow much more efficient than what it exactly is all right so this is it for today's class um, because we do not have further time right now uh, if you have any questions you can ask otherwise the class is stopped here okay